Well, greetings to you. Uh, it's just me today, I'm afraid, uh, for morning prayer on this Friday, uh, the 8th of May. Oh, normal lection, we, re re we remember Julian of Norwich. Uh, and uh, also, of course, uh, today we commemorate uh, VE Day. So let's bring ourselves together in God's presence and offer morning prayer today. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O oh Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Well, our psalm for today is psalm number 33. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, for it is good for the just to sing praises. Praise the Lord with the lyre. On the ten-stringed harp sing his praise. Sing for him a new song. Play skillfully with shouts of praise. For the word of the Lord is true and all his works are sure. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the loving kindness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all their host by the breath of his mouth. He gathers up the waters of the sea as in a water skin, and lays up the deep in his treasury. Let all the earth fear the Lord, stand in awe of him, all who dwell in the Lord. For he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to naught. He frustrates the designs of the peoples. But the counsel of the Lord shall endure forever, and the designs of his heart from generation to generation. Happy the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people he has chosen for his own. The Lord looks down from heaven and beholds all the children of earth. He fashions all the hearts of them and understands all their works. No king is saved by the might of his host, no warrior delivered by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance, for all its strength it cannot save. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon those who fear him on those who wait in hope for his steadfast love, to deliver their soul from death and to feed them in time of famine. Our soul waits longingly for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Indeed, our heart rejoices in him. In his holy name have we put our trust. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us, as we have set our hope on you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And our New Testament reading is taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, beginning at verse 14. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. 
he stood up to read and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed upon him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is this not Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up for three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet, Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town and led him to the brow of a hill on which their town was built so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Death is swallowed up in victory where, O oh death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. Where, O oh death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? They who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of his, the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. They who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so to our prayers of intercession. Heavenly Father, today we remember Julian of Norwich, spiritual writer and teacher. We give you thanks and Remember our own spiritual writers and teachers, all those who form us in our faith. Help us to guide us in the ways of righteousness. And as we look to you today in the midst of challenge, 
So we pray that you will help us to follow you according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the church, for Christians throughout the world, for all who proclaim you as Lord and Saviour. Pray in particular for our own diocese, the Diocese of Worcester, for our bishops, Bishop John and Bishop Martin, that you will equip them with everything they need, the wisdom and the knowledge to lead us. Pray too for our archdeacons, Robert and Nicky, as we face difficult times to navigate, many often unprecedented decisions need to be made. So we ask again that you will equip them with everything they need. Today we're asked within our diocesan cycle of prayer to pray for the finance team in the diocesan office. So we thank you for them. For the director of finance, Helen Archer-Smith. The other staff there, Thelma Milliken, Joe Burr and Jessica Lambert. And once again, as we face unprecedented challenges through our church buildings being closed and loss of income that that brings about. So we pray for those who will sooner rather than later be faced with very difficult decisions on our behalf. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Further afield within the church, we pray today for the Diocese of Mundri in South Sudan with Bishop Bismarck Monday Avakea Azumu and the Diocese of Isabel in Melanesia with the Reverend Ellison Quitey. Well, we lift these peoples to you, Lord and ask simply that your spirit will guide and bless them today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, as we gather here on this 75th anniversary of VE Day, which we commemorate nationally, so we give you thanks for peace, And we come before you mindful that there are many areas of the world which still don't experience peace. peace. So we do pray for nations like Afghanistan, Syria and the, Lem and the Yemen. We pray that you will continue to guide the leaders of all nations in the ways of peace, recognising the extraordinary and exceptional challenges faced at the moment in many different ways, and asking simply that your kingdom values will prevail. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we bring before you those known to us who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Those individuals we know who are ill. Those who are lonely, anxious, depressed. We ask simply that you would pour out upon them the healing oil of your mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we bring before you those who are bereaved. We give you thanks during this Easter tide for the good news of the empty tomb and the risen Jesus Christ. The hope of new life, life in all its fullness that he offers both in this world and the next. We do lift before you those who have lost loved ones, in particular the friends and families of Anne Wright, 
and of John Sadler, asking that you will grant them strength and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, today as we have a new day ahead of us, <clears throat> we thank you for the opportunities that will present themselves, the opportunities that you have in store for us, and we pray that your will be done as we anticipate a bank holiday. So we ask that you will lead all people in ways of righteousness, that people won't abuse the freedom that they have today and will remain safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So to our collect for today, most holy God, the ground of our beseeching, who through your servant Julian revealed the wonders of your love, grant that as we are created in your nature and restored by your grace, our wills may be so made one with yours, we may come to see you face to face and gaze on you forever. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And may the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Well, thank you for joining me. Uh, and I hope that you are safe and uh, healthy. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.